pleasure to be here uh, to welcome you all to what is really the birthday kickoff of the 20th anniversary of the Saga Center. And I'm just so thrilled to be here. It's hard to believe it's been 20 years. And this uh, Saga Center, as you all know, has really grown, grown into be something that's so important to the greater Lowell community as you look at public education and the partnerships that we've been able to develop with UMass Lowell Chancellor Leaders here, with Middlesex Community College, and the public schools throughout the Merrimack Valley is just so, so vitally, vitally important. I was mentioning to someone earlier that my daughter, Julie Jerkin, is a history teacher in the town of Chelmsford. She just loves bringing the students to the Sanga Center and the, and the work, of the, of the knowledge that the, that the students and the teachers and the faculty get from, uh, from the Sanga Center. So it's just so um, important that we're here today to celebrate this. It's hard to believe that it's, it's been 20 years. I'm uh, thrilled to see Paul's uh, sister, Dahlia Slutt, here today. Uh, I'm just going to say a few words as well. But on behalf of, of the city, it's just so important to reinforce this partnership between uh, the National Park Service and the, and the school. This is a, a living, breathing museum. And when you, when you think about the number of students that have come through this building over the last uh, 20 years and how their lives have been shaped as a result of what they've learned here and brought back to the classroom, it's just so uh, rewarding. And I know that. Former Senator Saugus and Congresswoman Saugus and their whole family is just so proud of the work that Senator Saugus did to bring the National Park Service here, working with people like Brian Mark, who's here today representing Congresswoman uh, Saugus. So, on behalf of my colleagues in government, it's a pleasure to be here uh, today to wish the Saugus Center nothing but success going going forward. Um, to really say that the work that you do, and as mayor of the city of Lowell, I get to also be. Uh, chairperson of the Lowell School Committee working very closely with our Superintendent Jean Franco, who is here. And I just know the difference that the Saga Center has made in the Lowell Public School, as I mentioned earlier, also in the lives of uh, students throughout the, really throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Because I'll drive by here on any given day, and there'll be buses parked along John Street waiting for the students to disembark and come into this wonderful, uh, wonderful center. So, again, when Paul Saga said the dream of having Lowell be a Living Laboratory, we worked with Dr. Pat Mogan, who happened to be my elementary school principal at the Riley School, so I've known, I've known Pat Mogan since 1959, if I dare say. Um, and I just know that what he was able to do working with uh, the federal government, and obviously the state government, has really been uh, key to really keeping Lowell changing and evolving as time goes on. So it's a pleasure to give this brief welcome, and I also have the distinct honor to present a proclamation from our fine senator. Thanks, Sheila. Well, first off, happy birthday, Songus Industrial History Center. And to those who have all helped to build, shape, and sustain the center, thank you. What an amazing experiment and, and uh, an experience this has all been over the last 20 years. The partnership between the university, the park, with a strong affiliation with the Lowell School System has been nothing but amazing. And we've all used our own strengths from each of the institutions to shape something that continues to thrive. I think that we would all agree that we are doing what Senator Paul Songus expected us to do, innovate and engage young people in our heritage. Some have called the National Park System America's greatest university without walls. It includes some of the world's most magnificent, magnificent landscapes, rich biodiversity, and historic objects and authentic places that reflect some of the most important events and places in America. Lowell is one of these places. Early on, pioneers saw the magic of combining formal education with experiential education. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention one of those early pioneers, and that's Don Pearson, who, who's with us today from the university. Thank you for being here, Don. Thank you for being here. I also wanted to remind people of uh, Don's uh, counterpart here at the, in the National Park who passed away this past year, and that's uh, Sandy Walter, who was my predecessor here some, some years ago. But uh, between Don and Sandy and all the efforts that went on, um, it was really their leadership that brought us along to the early stages to where we are today, 20 years later. So thank you, Don, and thank you, Sandy. Students can now study science in a classroom and then get out on a riverboat and become scholarly detectives of the water's resources, the ecosystem, how man used it for utilitarian and commercial uses, 
and engage in conversations on their stewardship responsibility for the, for the environment. Engineering students can immerse themselves in the canal and factory systems that Francis Cabot Lowell designed at the, at the turn of the 19th century, and then build their own systems right downstairs in our own water room. And as a diverse community, there is a need to have a crucial conversation about Lowell's constant flow of immigrants and instill a sense of common heritage as Americans. Educators tell us that linking classroom learning with experiences in our own classrooms of nature and historic sites, that they find students better remember content, they gain stronger connections to the historical narrative, and they adopt new values and behaviors. In this 20th year, the center has reached over one million students and teachers. One million. That truly is a testament to the hard work and the passion that the staff of the university and the park has played in developing such meaningful programs. Many of you have been in this business for a long time. Some of you, Peter, have retired from this business. <laughs> Rick. And some of you are somewhat new to this business. And some of you, as the students from the Revolving Museum, we hope to engage further in this business. But to all of you, I sing your praises and thank you for your commitment to place-based educational excellence. Thank you and happy birthday.